والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم And God said Let there be light And there was light Praise be to Allah, who showers his mercy on his servants and guides his obedient servants to the straight path. I testify that there is no true God but Allah, the one who has no partner, and that Muhammad is his messenger and servant. O Allah, bless our Prophet Muhammad, his honorable family, and all his companions. The topic to be discussed now is the history of religion and the origin of the true religion. Is it heavenly or man-made? Some people have claimed that the human being did not come to know the true religion as we now know it all at once. Rather, it developed over centuries during the prehistoric era known as the Stone Age. The original state of man, according to their claims, was ignorance. He did not know he had a Lord and Creator. The religious sense uh, was stirred when early man saw the animals feared an invisible power and feared thunder and lightning, of which he too was afraid. He began to search for a God towards whom he could express his feelings of devotion and loyalty, love and awe. It didn't matter to him whether this god was the sun, the moon, the stars, even trees or animals. Paganism developed from one form to another until man innovated monotheism or tawhid by himself. In other words, religion is a purely human invention in these people's view. This is, of course, the position of evolutionists, the advocates of the Darwinian theory who considered early man as having evolved from a common ancestor with apes. He was created deficient, unable to receive the great truth completely. Therefore, it would be meaningless to make man responsible for obeying his creator or to make him his vicegerent on earth. According to this, according to this view, man was originally pagan, believing in falsehood, and monotheism was a, lease, was a later development. This development was the result of his own expanding cumulative experience and deeper and deeper contemplation, and did not come with divine guidance. Rather, as he advanced in science and manufacturing, he also advanced in his knowledge of Allah the Exalted. The treatment of human history is purely materialistic. There is no place in their worldview for Allah, nor for prophets sent by Allah to teach humanity how to live in accordance to His will. The result of this view is a denial of the human being's responsibility to his Creator. An example of their historical method is the way that the Orientalists treated the history of Egypt, Iraq, and the rest of the Middle East since ancient times. What had been completely left, what has been completely left out is the call to Islam borne by the messengers of Allah throughout the history of the nations which occupied these lands. They claim that the first monotheist in history was the Egyptian pharaoh Akhnaton, whose original name was, uh, was Amenhotep IV, who worshipped the invisible power behind the sun god Aton. They claim that his idea spread to Iraq where Abraham established his religion. In other words, Islam, the religion of Abraham, was not a revelation from Allah. Now, let us uh, move uh, to discuss the methodology of uh, researchers in the origin of religion. Anthropologists have used 
two basic methods for seeking evidence of the earliest form of human religion. The first is archaeological, examining artifacts and written records of ancient civilizations such as the Egyptians, Sumerians, etc. The second is observing the religious practices of con contemporary primitive peoples like the Bushmen, Pygmies and tribes of isolated Indians in South America. They found those ancient civilizations and these modern peoples all practicing forms of idolatry and polytheism. Based on this evidence, they made the extrapolation that polytheism must have been mankind's original religion. But does their evidence really allow them to draw this conclusion? There are a number of problems, not only in their methodology, but in their aims. The first thing we must be clear about is that conclusive knowledge about prehistoric events cannot be obtained, which makes the goal of their research dubious. As for their methodology, it is based on the assumption that those primitive peoples and ancient civilizations had always been in the same condition as they were when we came to know of them, or were even more primitive in their beliefs in the preceding eras. This assumption is not founded on evidence. An alternative possibility is that these religious forms represent a degeneration from an earlier correct religion. Evidence for this possibility can be gleaned from the uh, histories of known religions from the beginning of uh, history until today. Judaism and Christianity started out as pure monotheistic faith. Then they became mixed with distortion and falsehoods with the passage of time. Buddha was a reformer who introduced a number of humanistic principles to the religion of India. He did not claim to be God, nor did he suggest to his followers that he be an object of worship. Yet today most Buddhists have taken him to be God uh, and prostrate to idols made in their perception of his likeness. So it is not far-fetched to suppose this phenomenon to have occurred uh, in prehistory as well. It's amazing that researchers in the history of religions have ignored the histories of the prophets and feigned ignorance of their scriptures, yet they cling tenaciously to their ambiguous physical evidence. The strangeness increases and the calamity is greater when the researcher is a Muslim blindly following the Orientalists, even though the divine scriptures have spoken clearly, leaving no room for doubt, whether in reference to the creation of man or the substance of his creation or the system of his life or the wisdom behind his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said uh, what means, and pursue not that of which you have not the knowledge, for surely the hearing, the sight, the heart, all of these shall be questioned of. And Allah said, I did not make them to witness the creation of the heavens and the earth, nor their own creation, nor do I take misleaders as helpers. If, as we have seen, Scientific methodology cannot lead us to definitive knowledge on these issues. Is there any other means to gain it? Verily, it's only the divine revelation which allows us to know the truth about the past, the present, and the future in those matters outside the reach of our minds and senses. Verily, it is only the Quran, the speech of Allah, the Almighty, the Glorious, which falsehood cannot come at from before it or behind it, a revelation from the wise, the worthy of all praise. The remote past is definitely part of the unseen, the ghaib. What we know of human history before 5,000 years ago is very little. As for what we know from before 10,000 years ago, it is less still. What is remoter than that is virtually unknown, of course, for one who is unconvinced that the Qur'an is a revelation from Allah, it, the Qur'an, cannot 
uh, be held as an authority that can be established by its lack of internal contradiction and its accurate reference to numerous natural phenomena which were unknown in the era of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to the most advanced civilizations how then did this unlettered man from a very primitive culture know about all these things which have only been discovered by science in the last century there can only be one explanation revelation from the all-knowing so if we take a look at the glorious Quran the following truths will very clearly appear to us the first reality uh, Allah created Adam from the beginning as a perfect complete individual being then he breathed into him of his spirit also Allah created him for a special purpose that is to say to worship him alone and Adam was created specially for this pur purpose Allah caused Adam to know him from the very beginning and he didn't leave Adam to figure out who his Lord was by contemplation the explanation of this truth is as follows the verses of the glorious Quran indicate that Allah created Adam breathed into him of his spirit and made the angels prostrate to him he taught him the names of everything until he excelled the angels with his knowledge then Allah housed Adam and his wife in paradise Allah said and we said O Adam dwell you and your wife in the garden and eat of the beautiful things therein as ye will but approach not this tree lest you become wrongdoers would any intelligent person figure that this honored creature who has been told the names of everything would not know Allah nor what is obligatory on him nor what Allah has made permissible for him nor the duty of the servant to his Lord after witnessing the angels glorifying Allah and praising him continuously without ever tiring of it all of this plus the fact that Allah gave him orders and prohibitions and warned him him and his wife about going near the prohibited tree in paradise would any intelligent person figure that this honored creature who has been told the names of everything would not know Allah nor what is obligatory on him nor what Allah has made permissible for him nor the duty of the servant to his role, Lord after witnessing the angels glorifying Allah and praising him continuously without ever tiring of it all of this plus the fact that Allah gave him orders and prohibitions and warned him him and his wife about going near the prohibited tree in paradise Allah also informed Adam about his enemy and the enemy of his wife Iblis the devil and that the result of obedience to him would be their expulsion from paradise and their unhappiness Allah said then we said O Adam Verily, this is an enemy to you and to your wife so let him not expel you from paradise and land you in misery and Adam did not disobey intentionally Allah said and indeed we made a covenant with Adam before but he forgot and we found on his part no firm will power Allah said in reference to the action of Iblis and he Satan swore by Allah to them both saying verily I am one of your sincere well-wishers so he misled them with deception then when they tasted of the tree that which was hidden from them of their shame shameful parts became manifest to them then after Adam and Eve's disobedience of Allah's prohibition and their obedience of their enemy and the occurrence of the exposure of their shame and error Allah said then they ate of the tree and so their shameful parts appeared to them and they began to sow together the leaves of the garden over their bodies thus did Adam disobey his Lord and go astray after doing the prohibited act Adam and Eve understood the effect of disobedience and regretted what had happened and they turned to Allah as asking him for his forgiveness and mercy confessing their error and their wrongdoing themselves Allah said about them 
They said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you, fear, if you forgive us not and bestow not upon us your mercy, we shall certainly be amongst the losers. Allah said, Then Adam received words from his Lord, and his Lord pardoned him, means accepted his repentance. Verily, he is the one who forgives, means accepts repentance, the most merciful. And those words with which Adam beseeched Allah, turning to Allah in repentance, were none other than Allah's most excellent names and great attributes. And those words with which Adam beseeched Allah and turn it to him in repentance, were none other than Allah's most excellent names and great attributes. And this was his way of supplication, and this was his way of supplication and calling on Allah. And all of this was before Allah expelled him from paradise. Then Allah reminded him of the enmity of Iblis, the devil, towards him. And that Iblis is the source of evil, and that Allah is the only source of guidance. Allah said, then his Lord chose him and turned to him with forgiveness and gave him guidance. Allah said, Get you down upon the earth, both of you together from paradise, with enmity between you. And if there comes to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance shall neither go astray nor fall into distress and misery. But whosoever turns away from my message, that's to say, neither believes in it, nor acts on its orders, etc. Verily, for him is a life of hardship, and we shall raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, the saying of Iblis, Iblis said, By your might, I will surely mislead them all, except your chosen slaves amongst them, means the faithful, obedient, true believers of Islamic uh, monotheism. The second reality, every person is born with a natural disposition of Tawheed, believing in the oneness of his Creator. Adam was on the faith of Tawheed, as is indicated in his history. Also the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet indicate that the faith of Tawheed is not exclusive to the first man Adam, but it is general for every person. Allah has said, so set your face towards the religion as one by nature upright, the nature framed of Allah, in which he created mankind. Let there be no change in the creation of Allah. That is the straight religion, but, but most men know not. And also said, mankind were one community. Then Allah sent prophets with glad tidings and warnings. In another uh, verses, Allah said, Mankind were but one community, means one religion, Islamic monotheism. Then they differed, and had it not been for a word that went forth from your Lord, it would have seen, it would have been settled between them regarding uh, what they differed in. In these noble verses, is an indication that the upright religion is the natural disposition fitrah with which Allah has created man. And that is the complete religion which the people were following before the division. The scholars of tafsir, explanation of the Quran, in the explanation of Allah saying, the people were one nation, said that the people stayed ten centuries on the true religion. Before the change took place, and the appearance of shirk, which is worship of other than Allah. On the authority of Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, every child is born with the natural disposition, the fitra, meaning worshipping none but Allah alone, and his parents convert him to Judaism or Christianity or Mazdism, just as an animal delivers a perfect baby animal. Do you find it mutilated? The saying of the Prophet, every child is born, means there is no human being born except that he is born in the state of fitra, which is the Islamic nature, meaning the religion of Islam, as in the saying of Allah. So set your face towards the religion 
of pure Islamic monotheism, Hanifan, which means to worship none but Allah alone. Allah's fitra means the Islamic monotheism. Allah's fitra in which he has set man's creation. As for this fitra, natural disposition, it is said that it is the original faith, Iman, based upon which Allah took the covenant from the children of Adam on the day when he said to them, Am I not your Lord? They said, Yes, you are. This truth indicated in Allah's words, So set your face towards the religion of pure Islamic monotheism, Hanifan, means to worship none but Allah alone. That's to say, affirm your original covenant, which you gave on the day when you were taken from the loins of Adam, before your coming into this world. When Allah said to you, Am I not your Lord? This natural disposition in the Islamic nature, that is being free from false beliefs and ready to accept the correct beliefs. Verily, the reality of Islam is for the person to surrender to Allah and not to anyone other than Him. This is the meaning of La ilaha illallah. There is nothing that has the right to be worshipped except Allah. The heart is created in need of Allah and it cannot be satisfied by any mahboob uh, any beloved or the one to be beloved other than Allah they will never be at peace except with Allah so if these hearts loved Allah and singled him out for their love they would be at rest and at peace Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah Ar-Rad those who believe in the oneness of Allah and whose hearts find peace in the remembrance of Allah Verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find peace? The correspondence between the unspoiled nature, fitra, and the truth, al-haq, is the like the correspondence between the eye sight and broad daylight. Everyone with eyes can see. If, if they are left uncovered, the person will continue to see. But false beliefs like Judaism and Christianity and Mazdism are like a covering over the eyes. Similarly, everyone with normal tastes enjoys what is sweet. But it's possible for the sense of taste to be distorted by an illness so that sweet things taste bitter to the sick person. Being born on the fitra does not mean that the baby has an intellectual knowledge of Islam and belief. No, Allah has brought us forth from the wombs of our mothers knowing nothing. But the meaning, but the meaning of fitra is that the heart is pure, desiring the truth, that is to say Islam. So if the, child, uh, were, uh, if the children were left without any outside influence from the devils or parents or others, they would not grow up except to be Muslims. Little by little, as the child grows up, this natural disposition begins to move in the depth of his soul and it pulls him towards the great truth. We notice at a particular stage that he begins to ask his parents many questions almost without end about the things surrounding him. Who raised the sky? Why is it blue? Where does the sun go at night? Where does the light go when darkness comes? Why do stars twinkle? Where does the earth end? Where did I come from? And where was I before I came into this world? This is the fitra, awakening and getting acquainted with the creator of the universe and all that is in it. The more his natural ability grows and his knowledge increases, the more his heart will be at peace with faith in Allah alone, without associating any partners with Him. As for the one whose nature is corrupted by the factors of the surrounding environment, he will grow up with incorrect beliefs foreign to his sound nature. Allah said about the hypocrites, These are they who have purchased error for guidance. Here Allah Refer, referred to guidance as the capital which they had possessed 
which he had given them, but they had exposed it to dissipation. When they exchanged this sound nature, which was at their fingertips, and purchased with it misguidance, which was far away from them, they lost it all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so their trade was profitless, and they were not guided. The previously mentioned noble tradition of the Prophet stressed that the origin in the beliefs of man is Tawheed, oneness of Allah, and that he is born prepared for the correct faith in Allah, his originator and creator. As for shirk which is associating partners with Allah in worship, it is a deviation which overtakes and corrupts this original state due to the effect of the uh, surrounding environment upon him. For this reason, the Messenger of Allah said, and their parents make them Jewish. That is to say, if the parents are Jews, then they make them Jewish. Or they make them Christians. That is to say, if the parents are Christians, then they make them Christians. Or they make them Majans. That is to say, if the parents are Majans, uh, fire worshippers, they make them Majans. The point in this uh, tradition is that the deviation from the natural disposition, al-fitra, is not from the child, but it is from the outside influences. So if he reaches puberty and remains deviated from the natural religion, then misguidance remains with him. But if he submits himself to Allah, this misguidance is nullified and he returns to the natural Islamic disposition. The Messenger of Allah coined an example in this hadith, which confirms this meaning when he said, Just as the animal is born complete with all of its limbs and organs intact. Everyone born is born with a natural disposition, fitra. Just as the animal is born with all of its limbs and organs complete and sound. The Prophet said, Does anyone see in it any defect like missing uh, ears or nose or missing limbs? No. The maiming or uh, severing of uh, these organs occurred after its being born complete, whole and sound. So it is that the disbelieving parents change the nature of their child and illumine them, fools believes to him. So it is that the disbelieving parents change the nature of their child and illumine their fools believes to him. This meaning is corroborated in the sacred hadith Qudsi, reported by Ayyad. He said the Messenger of Allah said one day in his khutbah speech, reporting Allah's statement, Verily, I have created my servants upright, hunafa, and verily, the devils have come to them and diverted them from their religion, and have forbidden them that which I have allowed them and ordered them to associate with me that for which I have not given them any authority. The Arabic word Hunafa is the plural of Hanif, and its meaning is that which leans towards something and does not leave it, like the Hanaf curve in the leg uh, of a bow-legged person. He is not able to straighten his leg. The meaning of Hanif in this hadith is the one who turns away from all other religions and leans only towards Islam, or in other words, one who scorns the false creeds surrounding him and professes the true one, Islam. This hadith indicated that the nature of the human being is Tawheed, belief in the oneness of Allah, and that shirk associating with Allah, others beside him, is a contingent and a later introduction. Praise be to Allah so that he may be pleased and satisfied. Praise be to him as his glory and the greatness of his power deserve. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon Prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions, and those who follow them with goodness until the day of judgment. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And God said, let there be light. Bum 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 b